Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look at what we call the standard deviation of a random variable. And so what we're trying to do here, or at least what I'm trying to do here, is trying to give you an intuitive feel, an intuitive understanding of what a standard deviation is. A standard deviation is a measure, just like calculating the variance, is how numbers are distributed. If the standard deviation is small, just like if the variance is small, then the numbers are very closely grouped together. There are not a lot of variation. But if the standard devi deviation is large, just like if the variance is large, then the numbers are spread over a much greater range. There's a lot more variation in the numbers associated with what we're looking at. And of course, we can look at thousands, millions of different things. We can draw what we call variation distributions, and that's really what we have here. We have what we call a Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution. A normal distribution means that there's symmetry about uh, the way numbers are, are uh, arranged, meaning that there's a place where the numbers are the, basically the average number or the expected value where the greatest occurrence is, the higher this curve, the more numbers are like that, and the lower the curve, the less numbers are like that. For example, in this case, this, this curve here is supposed to represent the average height of men. And let's say that the average height of men is 5 foot 9 inches tall. Some are taller and some are shorter. So how do we measure that variation in the height of men? Well, we can do it with what we call the standard deviation. And the symbol used for standard deviation is that symbol sigma right here. So sigma is a measure of how widely the numbers are distributed or how tightly the numbers are distributed. And so when we draw that into a normal curve, and we have normalized this curve, then the area underneath this curve is equal to 1. And at this point, that may not mean a lot yet, but that's okay. What we can say then is that 34.1% of all the numbers lie between these two lines. 34% of all the numbers lie between these lines. 13.6% of all the numbers lie between those lines. 2.2% of the numbers lie between those lines, and so forth on the, on the other side as well. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's say we grab a million men on average, at, I would say randomly, not on average, but randomly, and we measure all their heights and we start distributing that on a curve, we'll get something like this. That means that 34.1% of all those men, of, of those million men, that of course would be 341,000, would have a height between 5 foot 9 inches and 1 sigma away from that height. Now the question is, what is 1 sigma? Well, 1 sigma is what we call the standard deviation. And there's a way to calculate that. And we're going to show you how to calculate the standard deviation. <clears throat> the way that works is the standard deviation, sigma, is equal to the square root of the variance divided by n. And if you remember what the variance was, if you have numbers of equal probability, then we can write this as equal to the square root of the variance, which would be the sum of all the numbers, that would be the number minus the average number, quantity squared, and then we take that whole thing and divide by n. Now in some cases, we also divide it by n minus 1. So sometimes we write n minus 1, sometimes we write n. At this point, that's not yet important. We'll show you when you write the one and when you write the other. So remember that this was the calculation of the variance, so we sum them all up and then we divide that by n, and then we take the square root, and that gives us, and actually, the variance, basically, because I'm getting ahead of myself, let me rewrite that here, the variance already includes, includes the divide by n, so let me take that back, so sigma is equal to the square root of the variance, the variance is equal to this, and therefore sigma can be written like that. So right now that may not mean a lot, not yet anyway, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a moment. So we're going to show you some examples of how to calculate the standard deviation. Now, once we calculate the standard deviation, we can then figure out how many of our sample fall within certain ranges. We can see what percentage of the population falls between plus or minus three sigma, and once we calculate what sigma is, we can actually calculate the numbers associated with that. And that's the great uh, beauty of the standard deviation of a random variable. So, again, in summary, the standard deviation from a normal distribution of values, in this case, as an example, the average height of men, 
or in this case, maybe I'll get rid of the average value. The height of men is distributed. The average height would be, of course, here. But the height of men would be distributed over some range. And then the distribution can then tell you how many of a sample will fall within certain categories. And those categories are defined by taking the average value and adding one sigma, two sigma, or three sigma to it or subtracting one sigma, two sigma, three sigma for it, and then based upon this normal distribution, we can figure out how many of the sample would fall within those ranges. For example, 68.2% of all the men will fall between minus one sigma and plus one sigma away from the average height. 95.5% of all the men will fall between plus and minus two sigma, so however much sigma is, for example, if sigma is 6 inches, that means 68.2% would fall between 6.5 and 5.3. And 2 sigma would then be 12 inches. That means that 95% would fall between 7 feet and 4 foot, 4 foot 9 or something like that and, and so forth. But we'll show you some examples of how that looks like. And finally, plus or minus 3 sigma would, of course, include 999.7% of your population, so out of a million. 997,000 men would fall between those two heights. So the whole idea then is standard deviation is calculating what that sigma is equal to so we have a full understanding of the distribution of the values of what we're looking at. Hopefully that helps you understand the standard deviation principle and now we're going to show you some examples to get the feel for how to calculate it and what it really means. So stay tuned if you're interested in finding out about the standard deviation. Oh.